Greetings, we are Team Graphene. The material that we will expand on in this presentation is pyrolytic carbon, more specifically its role in mechanical heart valves. Throughout the video, we will introduce the nature of heart valves, the reason for creation of mechanical heart valves, and pyrolytic carbon's role in this medical technology. Heart valves play an integral role in the regulation of blood flow during the cardiac cycle. Throughout one's lifespan, his or her heart valves will open and close over 3 billion times, and up to 20 liters of blood will course through them every minute when stressed. Heart valve leaflets are made up of a tough connective tissue and can be either tricuspid, consisting of three leaflets like the aortic valve pictured, or bicuspid, consisting of only two. The four major valves, the aortic, tricuspid, mitral, and pulmonary, can be found at the junction between the ventricles and their associated major arteries, classified as semilunar valves, or in between the ventricles and the atria. The atrioventricular valves have additional tendons anchoring them to the ventricular wall muscle that apply tension to the leaflets to ensure that they are operating at their full capacity. The primary function of the valves is to prevent the backflow of blood. The valves open and close in response to the pressure exerted on them by the pooling of blood in the various chambers of the heart dictated by the cardiac cycle. Notice from the video that there is never a semilunar and atrioventricular valve open at the same time, as blood collects either in the ventricles or the atria, but never both at the same time. Because of their integral role in regulating the cardiac cycle, valvular defects and disease can cause major problems, ranging from respiratory issues and kidney failure to full-on heart failure. Stenosis occurs when the leaflets become thicker and narrower. As a result, the valve is no longer able to fully open or close, and the valvular tissue hardens and loses flexibility. Calcification occurs when calcium builds up on the valve, which impedes its ability to open fully. Similarly, regurgitation is the result of damaged valves that no longer close fully. All of these conditions hamper blood flow so that the heart must overexert itself to compensate for the loss of efficiency. The production and utilization of heart valves replacement first began in the early 1950s. Its purpose is to assist patients with valvular heart diseases. The ideal replacement for diseased valves must be able to mimic native valves, meaning they should have quality hemodynamic, aka blood flow, lung durability, high thromboresistance, also known as blood clot resistance, and excellent implantability. Mechanical heart valves, in particular, were first implanted in 1952 by Dr. Charles Hofnagel to a 30-year-old woman. The most utilized mechanical valve today are called bileaflet valves introduced in 1979. Its superiority from other models is due to its accurate imitation to an actual valve. With bileaflets, blood can flow directly through its center. Bileaflet valves have two semilunar discs attached to a rigid valve ring. There are different types of materials used in creating mechanical valves. Pyrolytic carbon is considered one of the most valuable materials for mechanical valves for its strength and its clotting prevention. It is biocompatible thromboresistant, also known as blood clotting resistant. It's also resistant to wear and has high durability. It can withstand constant opening and closing cycles, which is one of the sole purposes for mechanical heart valves. Bioleaflets are especially known for using pyrolytic carbon. The process of manufacturing pyrolytic carbon is neither a simple nor inexpensive one. It all begins with a gaseous precursor composed of hydrocarbon gas, such as methane or acetylene, and is based upon the chemical vapor deposition process. High pressure and temperature facilitate this mechanism, with deposits of carbon being the ultimate product. The hydrocarbon gas is decomposed in a vacuum by dint of high heat and then deposited onto a surface known as a substrate, where it crystallizes. At such high levels of heat, often approximately 1300 centigrade, the deposition process follows fairly readily, but without this high heat, the adhesion is nearly impossible. This final step of recrystallization following vaporization is referred to as pyrolysis, hence the name pyrolytic carbon or pyrolytic graphite. Of course, it is important to consider that pyrolytic carbon serves solely as a coating for a substrate to augment that material's strength. In the case of a heart valve, this substrate is most often titanium, but it can also be another layer of carbon in the form of graphite. 
Surprisingly, the layer of pyrolytic carbon need not be very thick to augment the strength of its substrate. On the contrary, it can be only approximately 30 nanometers or 3 millionths of a millimeter. Pyrolytic carbon has a structure similar to that of graphite. However, the main structural difference between the two at the molecular scale is the presence of covalent bonding interactions between the sheets of graphene and pyrolytic carbon in lieu of non-bonding van der Waals forces present in graphite. At its core, it has a polycrystalline structure arranged essentially in a mosaic. This causes pyrolytic carbon to be significantly more distorted in its shape, but also allows for greater ductility, durability, and strength in comparison to graphite. Furthermore, mechanical heart valves that are coated with this material are significantly less likely to contribute to clotting and also exhibit longer lifespans. Other significant properties of pyrolytic carbon include its anisotropy, lack of porosity, thermal conductivity, and diamagnetism. Thus, it serves as a powerful source of reinforcement in the face of the high levels of repeated stress that heart valves are typically subjected to which, quantitatively speaking, is approximately an average of 7.2 newtons per unit area for each heartbeat. Specifically, bileaflet or trileaflet valves often include pyrolytic carbon as a coating on the gated portion that regulates blood flow, as well as the portion that supplies structural support to the body of the valve. The next section will elaborate more on this utility. Along with the substantial benefits of mechanical heart valves come some limitations. Perhaps the most significant is the possibility for a blood clot to form on the flaps of the valve. When a natural valve is replaced with a prosthetic one, scar tissue tends to build up, which leads to blood clots. This mechanical heart valve has two blood clots forming near the hinges of the flaps on either side. These clots, when lodged in the hinges, can cause malfunction. Clots can also break off and flow through the bloodstream before lodging elsewhere, leading to a heart attack or stroke. In order to prevent these clots, Patients who receive a mechanical heart valve almost always have to take blood-thinning medication for the rest of their lives. In addition to blood clots, it is also possible for an infection to take hold, though this is rather rare. There are two main options for a heart valve replacement, tissue or mechanical. A tissue heart valve is produced using an animal donor's tissue, such as a cow's or a pig's. Tissue heart valves are usually less prone to blood clotting and therefore require less medication for blood-thinning. However, they typically last only 10 to 20 years before needing replacement, whereas mechanical heart valves typically last for the rest of the patient's life. This trade-off means each heart valve has its place in certain situations. Younger patients should lean towards the mechanical heart valve because the danger of getting multiple heart surgeries to replace expired tissue valves far outweighs taking more medicine. Older patients, however, may very well get a tissue heart valve in order to reduce the amount of necessary medication. Ultimately, mechanical heart valves and the materials that they are composed of help to highlight a significant relationship between structure, properties, and processing in the biomedical application of materials science and engineering. Their relevance in the medical field is indisputable, especially with the severity of heart issues in regards to health. Overall, they epitomize the utilization of materials to optimize and prolong the function of the human body.